Hey guys, Mr. here again for another video today, and we are back with our Houston Vikings franchise mode for what I believe to be episode number 41, which means we are getting pretty far, uh, pretty far into the series, pretty far into the sim as well, to be fair. It has almost been, or we're getting closer to uh, 10 years already, which, to be honest, is kind of crazy. So, um... Real quick, we're just going to talk about how we are playing right now because if we're looking at the standings, we are currently last in the Central Division and we are the only team that is really out of it because every other team, uh, there's a minimum or there's literally a point range from last uh, or well, I guess seventh and first of only seven points in our division. I mean, we are eight points away from last and then we need another seven so realistically we aren't making the playoffs this year but that's okay because we do still have our first round draft pick this year but uh like i said i think uh this year is the last year we have to get ready for next year where we will have to be a contending team so next year we will uh hopefully be a contender we also do not have our first round pick next year that is the main reason why but I do want to see. So we aren't, uh, we aren't as bad as Buffalo or Boston, but Florida is also just as bad as us. They actually have the exact same record as us too, and we have their first round draft pick this year. Uh, nobody bad in the Metro, or as bad I should say. And then San Jose. So really, we're like bottom five in the league right now. I do want to check the standings just to see where we are currently because we have got to be at least bottom six so we'll see where we are currently we are uh yeah we are bottom five right now with florida uh are tied for bottom four i guess or bottom three technically then buffalo san jose tied for second uh second worst and then boston is the worst team in the league currently so uh we will have to see how everything goes i believe there is another franchise player this year but honestly i do not remember let's see i i'm I want to say there is. I thought there was, although it might have been the Winnipeg series. No, oh, yeah, there is another uh, franchise player projected to go in this draft. Now, I'm not going to move up more than likely to get that franchise player because that would mean we would have three franchise players on this team. I think we'll just wait and see the luck of the draw because maybe Florida is a lottery pick. Maybe we are a lottery pick, and we'll just have to wait and see because... Like I said, I really don't want to have to move up and head into uh, head into this next uh, draft with another first overall selection being uh, another uh, franchise picks or franchise level player. So I wanted to start off the, this episode just explaining everything like that, but uh, I mean, I really do not know. I forgot to edit the trade block when I. Uh, was uh, looking at everything before I started the episode, but we just beat the best team in the league, I believe, which was Toronto. I think they might have been best team in the league. I know they were the best team in the East. They had the most points over there in the East. Uh, we'll scout the queue for a few weeks, uh, or for defensemen and goaltenders. At least we already did the forwards. So, yeah, I mean, I don't know, guys. Our AHL team, not doing too bad. 24 17 and 5. 24 18 and 5 now. But our NHL team, really not looking too hot. I honestly cannot see our NHL team making the playoffs this year. We'd have to really, really turn it on. But I, I really don't think it's happening. Like I said, I mean, who knows? Anything could happen. But we would have to go on, like, minimum 10 games. Like, minimum like eight game win streak just to get over 500 i say that and we got are now on a three game win streak and we are also uh now at uh 500 as well 22 22 and 8 interesting ryan pulock not bringing you back here thank you though we are now above 500 as well as harold nickerson goes down until february 21st which luckily it's a little bit less than two weeks away Oh my god, Ken Benson's already up to an 86. Wow. Okay, well that's scary. Uh, McIsaac, we will take out on that off that bottom pairing for Johannes Johannesson. Then we'll get Trojanovic, the top two ice time up there with Roning, who's actually an 87 now. Uh, you know what? He does not play like a two-way defenseman, so maybe I could change him back to a defensive defenseman, but I did like him up there. 
I was I was really thinking that. Like looking at some of his stats, I was thinking even though he doesn't have the greatest offensive awareness, I was thinking he could uh, definitely at least score some goals. I mean, he definitely doesn't have the most powerful shot, but it's it's really accurate for a defenseman. So yeah, we've got, we've definitely got some growth on the team this year. And Curtis David is up to a 92 right now as well. He's doing extremely well. Our top line in general is doing really good now. I don't really want to put. Benson on the top line right now so you know what what I think we'll do is I think we will try and make uh, the best second line we can so we have Benson Markinen although Gib Gibson's list as a second liner um, Gibson has 17 goals this season Markinen uh, you know what we'll go with Gibson he's got one more goal and one more assist so we'll just try Gibson on that second line then we'll have Reese Vanine and Markinen Perrin Moses and Buke so Yoshimura, Hishir, and David. We'll see how that goes. Will Terry Yoshimura grow anymore? I have no idea, but maybe. So he's got 33 points. Hishir has 44 points, and David has 40. He has 52 points, I believe. Uh, Zadina, he has 25 points. Benson, he has uh, 27 points. Gibson has 29 points. Reese, 16. Vaninen, 21. Markinen, um, what did I say for Gibson? He, he has 29. That means Markinen has 27. And then Buke has 15. Moses has 20. He's doing pretty good. And Perrin has uh, 23. He's doing really good as well. Ronan, he has 3. Uh, Trojanovic, he has 7 goals as a defenseman. That's pretty good. That's uh, 9 points for him. Kristanovic has uh, 12 points. McIsaac has seven points and jocelyn has six points johannes johannesson hasn't played yet and i do not know uh do not know uh, how many points nickerson had herbass back up to a 79 we'll see uh if he does any better uh her, her, not herbass lukanen has brought his stats up a pretty solid amount that's for sure so maybe we could uh see see him get a little bit better over this regular season although who knows I mean, anything could happen, but yeah, we're currently sitting at around 500 now, 24, 24, and 8, which honestly is not great. We are above 500 again, but uh, honestly, the only thing that would really help us right now is winning at least five of the next six games we are playing before the deadline. If we do that, then we could most definitely have a chance to get into the get into a playoff spot this season but it it will be a rough time and it will be hard we keep getting notifications that's why it's taking so long to sim this right now do not know what happened against calgary we won now we in a back-to-back -back against detroit and new york and we get nickerson back i don't think we have him back for the islanders game but let's go and uh, add him back into the lineup so Trojanovic will get switched out nickerson's up to an 86 as well right now so i mean if we get solid growth out of Trojanovic, he gets up to like an 84 and then Kristanovic, jocelyn or mcisaac all go up one our defense could honestly be pretty solid next year nickerson hasn't been doing too bad but honestly not much help from playing with ronin so we'll have to see how they do together uh or we'll we'll keep them together for now so shootout loss to the islanders but that's okay we did get a point and it is to an Eastern Conference team that we did lose to, so that's okay. Now, Nashville, I believe they are in our division, so that is a big win over them. Minnesota, or they aren't in our division, are they? I don't think so. Uh, honestly, I couldn't tell you. I do not remember, but nonetheless, it would be a very big win if we could get it over them. Let's see. Come on, we beat them a 3 nothing shutout. Don't know who was in net, but that is good. And then the last game before the deadline. So like I said, I only wanted to lose one game out of the next or out of those six games uh, heading up to the deadline. But that is not bad. We lost two, but we got a point in one of them. So we are now 29, 25, and 9, which is still not the greatest record, but that might be more respectable. And we are gonna be more respected because we are in a playoff spot as of right now in the central division so if we had to be winnipeg there that would have been really good but that win over nashville really helped us out and that win over minnesota if minnesota had to beat us there they would have been one point behind uh, no they would have been over us they would have had 66 points we would have had 65 points so that that was a big win over minnesota now our next divisional opponent 
uh, game. I do not know when that is. Let's see, when would that when would that be? It is against St. Louis. So uh, we'll have to look out for that. Let's just simulate up to this New York game. So we'll just send the next week and a half, I guess, against San Jose. We win, and that's our 30th win of the season. We lose to Vegas. That's okay, even though it is a Western Conference team. But we do beat St. Louis. And in the back-to-back, -back, we do get two Ws as well. That is good. We beat Ottawa there. So next game against a divisional opponent is Colorado. So we'll sim the next two weeks. I will have to edit the scouting assignment twice during this little sim of the next two weeks, though. Let's see. So we lose to the Rangers, but again, an Eastern Conference team. That's not that big of a deal. Anaheim not in our division, but Sebastian Reese has been injured until March 27th, which is about a week and a half away, two weeks away, I think it said. Uh, Dmitry Timoshov will not be put on that uh, third line. He will be put on the fourth line, and Joey Buke will get some third line ice time there. Uh, looking good so far. Benson's up to an 87. Is he listed as a first liner yet? He is still listed as a second liner. All right, very interesting. Uh, Gibson's up to an 83 as well now, so uh, this could be very interesting. If Vanainen grows, I mean, if Markinen grows, if Sedinia grows, if Benson grows, if Gibson grows, like we could have the same problem we have in the Winnipeg series with having six first line forwards because. McDavid, or not McDavid, sorry, David is, uh, his year is listed as a first liner, so is Yoshimura, so that right there, that's our first line, then we have our second line of Zadina, uh, Benson currently, but he will most definitely pass, well he already is past his year, but he will most definitely blow by his year in the offseason, and then Barry Gibson as well is listed as a second liner right now, Markinen, if he grows at all, I don't care if he grows at all, as long as he stays as a third line checking forward, because if he jumps up to a second liner, we are boned. Vanainen, he could get a jump to a second liner too. Buke, I mean, it's possible he could get that jump as well. Uh, so could Moses and so could Perrin. They are all listed as third liners. Plus, we just lost Reese, who is a low elite pros well, not prospect, but a low elite player in our system as well. So very interesting, that's for sure. Can we beat Colorado now? We do. So we are getting a lot of important wins over divisional opponents, which is really good, of course. We have now have one against uh, against Chicago, and then we also have one against Dallas. So we'll just send the next week then up into the 1st of June or June, right? I believe it's June. <laughs> uh, Timoshov will get switched out for Reese. Is Reese listed as a third liner? Yes, he is. So you know what? We're going to stick with Reese on that third line because I mean, it looks like everything has been working out with the lines that I did have, and it looks like we are on our way to the playoffs as well. It wasn't looking too good for us uh, for a little bit, but we are hopefully on our way to the playoffs as Sebastian Reese gets injured again. Oh, yeah, sorry. We have to go to April. Yeah, wait. Uh, January, February, uh, what? Mar March, April, May, June, July. I don't know. Where are we? I don't know. I really don't, honestly. Timoshov, uh, yeah, it, wait, what? Uh, sure, yeah, okay, yep, sure, whatever. Uh, <laughs> Dallas we beat, all right, that is good. 37-29-11. Uh, we might have already clinched. Holy shit. I was just looking at the AHL record. We are now in second in our division. I was looking at an AHL team's record that we were about to go against, Holy frig, the Chica uh, Chicago, the Chicago Wolves, is it the Chicago Wolves? Uh, let's see, it is the, yeah, Chicago Wolves, they have 125 points, they have already clinched their conference, they are 60, 12, and 5, I've got to check out that team, that is a crazy record, where are we right now, we are the Liverpool, uh, we are in 5th right now in our division, so there is a chance, we could make the playoffs down there in the AHL as well, but uh, not looking too good. So any moment now, we should be able to see uh, us clinching a spot in the playoffs. It just depends on whether we will get home ice in the first round or not. As Jonathan Kristanovic goes down until April 8th, which means I think he will miss the first week. Uh, I think he misses the first week of the playoffs. I'm not 100% sure about that. I think that is what will happen. Jocelyn will get the call up to the top four. 
Uh, and yes, actually, he won't even miss the first round. He sh- he might just miss the end of the regular season, uh, but that is okay with me because I was hoping, uh, or I'm hoping that we will have our full team ready to go for the playoffs since, you know, we did make it. Jonathan Kristanovic is fully healed already, which is good. He was back a day early, I believe. I think that is, I think uh, we are on the 7th right now. So Kristanovic, like I said, he'll get put back into the team. Then Johannes Johannesson will get scratched again for Jocelyn. So uh, there we go. 4-2 win over the LA Kings. We lose the last game of the season, but we won uh, 40 games this, se- uh, this year. Sebastian Reese is back in time for the first round as well. So we officially have our uh, full team back to where it is supposed or where it is supposed to be and what it is supposed to look like so uh very interesting that is good we will see how everything goes in the next episode of course i'm not gonna end the episode yet but let's see lukanen up to an 81 very interesting how did he do throughout the regular season 923 save percentage to be fair he really brought his stats up there radislav herbas uh he played 35 games didn't have a great record, didn't have the greatest save percentage, although it was above the league average by just a little bit. He still lists as a backup goalie, but now he's 23, so his value probably dropped a lot again. So, yeah, we are going to get ready for Chicago in the next episode, but let's go and check out some stats. So, in the Western Conference for the first round, we have uh, Houston versus Chicago. We have Anaheim versus uh, Winnipeg. Then we have Arizona versus Vancouver and then the Battle of Alberta as well. In the East, we have Toronto versus Philadelphia, Tampa versus Ottawa, uh, Washington versus Columbus, and New York versus New Jersey. Interesting. So I'm assuming we came. Uh, actually, no, we had the exact same amount of points as Chicago. So we have home ice advantage in this as well. So I'm assuming we finished uh, ahead of them since we had more overtime and regulation or regulation and overtime wins but uh yeah let's go check out some stats really quickly curtis david almost a point per game player this year actually that's not sure he might have been a point per game player he might have missed um some games although i do not remember so dallas just uh just falling short in uh in this or in this season sorry 87 points not enough for to beg them a playoff spot in the central division so Only three teams from the Central will be going to the playoffs. So, yep, we had uh, 38 regulation plus overtime wins, and they had uh, 33. So, yeah, we have home ice advantage. Very good entire league. We finished. Where did we finish? We finished uh, 14th, which overall isn't too bad. A little bit above the middle of the pack. Let's see. Where did Florida finish? Florida finished bottom two in the league. So that is a potential lottery uh, pick for us. Obviously, our our pick isn't going to be uh, worth anything this year, but that is okay with me. So, uh, yeah, that is what that is going to look like, or that's what the regular season standings look like. Let's see what our team is looking like this year. Curtis David breaks 30 goals this year with 48 assists as well. First time he gets 30 goals in his career. He had 87 penalty minutes this year. Does he not have good discipline? I mean, 85 discipline really isn't that bad. Uh, to be fair, though, definitely wish he'd score a little bit more. 5'9 sniper with uh, 84 body checking, and he has 87 penalty minutes. Interesting, okay. Most goals definitely went to him, but we also had three other 20-plus goal scorers in Markin and Gibson and Yoshimura. I don't know how Markkinen does it, man. He's got 45 points this year, almost uh, up to his uh, career high right there. But, like, his shot is really, really bad. I truly do not know how he gets goals. Most assists also... Oh, no, sorry, I was going to say it also goes to uh, Curtis David. But, no, it actually went to Nico Hischier with 52 assists. And, obviously, most points we already saw went to Curtis David. Best plus minus was their top two. Roning and Nickerson. Philip Zadina had a really good plus minus as well with a plus 16. Not too bad from him. Penalty minutes. David led the team in penalty minutes. Nice goaltenders. We had Lukanen, who was our starter for basically the whole season, and then Herbass, who was our backup. Let's go check out the stats from the players throughout the entire league. 
And uh, let's see. So goalies, most wins goes to Braden Holtby uh, with 43. Best save percentage as a starter goes to Vasilevsky with a 936, which is really good, and a 185 GAA. So he will most definitely win the Vesna this year. That is actually unreal. Uh, most points should check all skaters first, but I'm assuming it goes to a forward. Yes, it does. So uh, Connor McDavid gets the uh, Art or will get the Art Ross this year with 90 points to his name. He is also tied for the most goals in the league with Jonathan Tavares. By the looks of it, very interesting. So 90 points for McDavid, 88 points for Tavares, 87 points for Marner. Wow, wish he would have done that uh, for me in Winnipeg. Uh, 86 points for Casey Middlestot, 86 for Stamkos, 85 for Hall, 85 for Backstrom, who is now in 84 overall. Kane is starting to drop off as well. He's in 89. Uh, Barry Ashen, 216th overall pick by the uh, Washington Capitals. He is a low elite with 84 points this season. Matthews with 84. Gaudreau, need a rider with 84 as well. He's up to an 86. I'm assuming that top line is uh, Middle Stat Hall and Niederreiter. That is really good. Rodney Akers, wow, he is really good. He was drafted fourth overall a few years ago. Uh, so, yeah, there's uh, quite a decent amount of point per game players. Jack Eichel also had 44 goals this year. So, there were four 44 goal scores this year. Brady Tachuk was a 44 goal scorer this year as well. There was one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Almost 10 40 goal scorers this year. That is ridiculous. Most assists as a forward goes to Nicholas Backstrom with 69. Best plus minus as a forward goes to Austin Matthews with a plus 43. And William Nylander with a plus 35. And probably Mitch Marner, I'm assuming, on that top line as well with 33. That would be an unreal top line. We have Marner, um, Nylander, and Matthews. That would be very interesting. So let's go check the defenseman out who had the most points as a defenseman. Eric Carlson with 85 points this season. Uh, most goals as a defenseman I think might also go to him. No, nope, actually Charlie McAvoy and Julius Honka both got 18. Very interesting. Most assists goes to Eric Carlson with 69. Uh, best plus minus goes to Mikhail Sergachev with a plus 51. He had a higher plus minus than he had points this season. That is crazy. Although Victor Hedman with a plus 39 as well. I'm assuming that's the top pair in uh, in Tampa. That is unreal. If both their defensemen get 50 points every year, plus Kucherov, Stamkos, Nemesnikov, Point, Palat, Johnson, yeah, and Vasilevsky obviously do. That is an unreal team. Uh, most penalty minutes goes to Jake Dotchin with the 164 and now checking out rookie skaters let's see most points goes to andrew hansen with uh 56 then george's or george george's paris with 53 hunwick and benson tied for third at 51 not too bad most goals as a rookie goes to paris or patty i'm just gonna go with paris most assist goes to benson not too bad best plus minus goes to paris as well Rookie goaltenders now. Let's see. Let's scroll all the way back. Most games played as a rookie this season was Vincent Levasseur. 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 Sure. 40 games played. Uh, didn't do too good, though. Best uh, best as a star. Best as a backup would be Stanislav Kasparaitis with a 934 save percentage for 1.9 GAA. Although Herbats in his rookie season didn't do too bad either. 916 and a 245. So that will be it from me in this episode, guys, since I've almost dragged this on uh, for another 10 minutes since uh, ending the regular season. So that will be it from me, guys, in this episode. Hopefully you all did enjoy. Tune in next time to face Chicago in the first round with our uh, with our new young team. Thank you guys so much for watching. Hopefully you all did enjoy, and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.